everybody, it's Jackie here and we are putting together our second block of the month. This is the Barnyard. Hopefully everybody has received their blocks in the mail and you have already watched the cutting instructions video. And like I said in the video, if you have any questions or you have any concerns about any pieces in your kit, send me a message right away so we can get you um, squared away and um, all of your questions answered. Okay, so here is what the barnyard block looks like when it's all done. Super cute. And um, one thing I want you to know, I've decided for my quilt top that all of my barns are going to be the same color. Um, but a lot of you have, uh, pretty much everybody has different colors in their barns. So when you're laying out your pieces to be able to make your quilts or your quilt blocks, uh, just make sure that you have them lined up um, in your piles in the order that you're going to sew them so that the same color gets put together. Okay. Uh, okay. So the first thing that we're going to do when we're putting our blocks together uh, or one thing I noticed, let me just start there. One thing I noticed about this block is this block is a perfect block to do what's called chain piecing. Chain piecing, it saves so much time and it really makes it fun uh, because you can basically do each step with your uh, putting your block together, all of the blocks at the same time. That's called chain piecing. And I'm going to show you how to do that with this block. So the first thing that we're going to do and um, following the directions on your, on the back of your instruction card is we are going to put the barn part together in a log cabin style. So if anybody, any of you who have created log cabin blocks before, um, this will be, this will make a lot of sense to you because it is, um, it's just like starting a log cabin block. We're just, but we're just going around the yellow. So you're encasing your yellow square in your barn color um, with your pieces. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is we are making five total blocks. So I've already made one. So I'm going to show you how to chain piece the other four. Some people, they like to do one practice block all by itself just to see how it goes and then do all of the rest of them together. Just like you see here, you can totally do that. Um, sometimes that just helps make it make more sense. But if you want to chain piece all five all together, remember you do have enough of your fabric and maybe even leftover from your last kit that you can um, totally make a, an extra block if you need to uh, make one uh, because you didn't like how one turned out or it came out too short or whatever. So uh, next thing we're going to do after you have your, you're going to take your yellow window square and you're going to take your two inch square pieces from all of your, all of your barns, all of the different fabrics, and you're going to lay them together, right sides together and match them up so that they look like that. And you're going to lay all of them together right there next to your machine. Now we're going to go to the needle and I'll show you how to line those up. So now we are at our sewing machine and I have a quarter inch foot with a guide on put on my machine. If you have a quarter inch foot or you've purchased a quarter inch foot, this is the foot you'll use for all of your blocks. It's really, um, it's really a great one to use. So one of the things I noticed about this block is you really want to use a scant quarter inch seam. Now remember that a scant quarter inch seam is a skinny quarter inch. So you're making it just kind of short of a quarter inch. Uh, now one of the great ways that you can measure to make sure that your quarter inch foot is in fact a quarter inch is when is taking a piece of paper or something like I'm going to grab this taking a piece of paper and bringing down your foot 
almost all the way and then putting your piece of paper right there just along the inside of your guide or just where your guides just on the very edge of your um of your pa paper and then you bring your needle down and then back up and then bring it out and it should it should make a hole and then use that to um to measure um, and make sure that it is in fact giving you a quarter inch. Now, if you'll notice, if you can zoom in here, you'll notice that when I have the edge of my paper lined up here on the quarter inch line, that my uh, needle is actually a, makes a fat quarter inch when I line it up with the just on my guide. So if I'm going to use the guide of my foot, I want to make sure that my fabric is actually on the inside of that guide, not on, not where the guide is laying on the edge, but the edge is inside the edge, inside of that guide to give me a proper quarter inch. But for this block, like I said, we want to do a scant, which is a skinny quarter inch and using my paper, that's where if you, um, if we can make sure we zoom in here again, we're, we're placing this, the paper down, but notice how instead of putting it against the edge of the guide, I'm actually on the inside of, um, here, there's the edge of the quarter inch foot. I'm actually lining up my, my paper or my fabric right a next lined up with the edge inside edge of the foot itself and I'm actually going to move this forward a little bit so you can get a good idea and that's lined up and I bring my needle down and bring it back up and now when we look at it and we'll put it bring it back here to the quarter inch now you can notice there is a quite a big quite a big difference there um where this one was my fat quarter inch where I had the guide laying on the very edge of my fabric and then this one is my scant this bottom one here is my scant quarter inch if I move that to line that up with the edge see how it the edge of my fabric actually is inside the quarter inch line that is a true scant quarter inch seam and that's what we want to use for our um, for our blocks today. Okay, so we're going to be using a scant quarter inch seam throughout our whole block uh, putting to our blocks together. So now that we have that figured out, we're going to uh, I'm going to show you how to uh, sew all of your blocks together um, using the um, what is it? What did I call it earlier? The, um, of course, my, my brain just decided to not work on me. Where we're going to sew all of the blocks at the same time at each step. So we're going to start with the first block and it's going to come to me what I, what I call it here in a second, um, after I get going. Um, so we, again, so when I lined this up, I lined it up with the inside of my quarter inch foot instead of with my guide. So you can actually see that there is a little bit of a gap between the edge of my fabric and my guide because I'm not looking at the guide. I'm actually looking at the inside of the foot itself and lining it up there. And that's where I'm going to sew all of my blocks. So I'm going to sew this first one all the way to the edge and you want to make sure that your needle goes in the down position and just past the first block and I'm going to leave it there with my needle in the down position. I'm going to grab my next uh, squares that I have put together and I'm going to lay it in here again lining it up with the actually here we go like this lining it up with the edge of the foot itself. And I'm placing it almost, almost against the needle also, making sure it's nice and straight, placing my foot all the way down, and then sewing the next one. And this is how you sew all of your pieces together at the same time. So we're going to do that with all of them. Here's the third one.
putting that all together. And then the fourth one doing the same thing. Okay, now we're going to uh, cut that thread. And now we're going to go over to our ironing board and I'll show you how to press these open. So now we are at the ironing board and I have my pieces that I just got done chain piecing together. Um, and I'm going to take my little scissors and I'm going to trim off the uh, extra thread at the end. And then I'm going to uh, just trim right in between the blocks to take, to take them apart from each other. And now we can, we can iron these uh, open all at the same time. So what we're going to do when we're ironing open our pieces is we want to, um, to press a, the seams away from the yellow square in the middle. And we're going to do that with all of the pieces. So right now we're doing this one here. Um, and we're going to press the seam toward your barn color, not the window. So we're going to take our little iron and I usually place it like this with the barn on the bottom and I put my iron on the barn, bring it close to the seam inside and then I let the iron pull the uh, window over. I want to do that with all of the all of the pieces all at the same time. Then when you're done with that, you're going to grab your next smallest piece for your barn and that's the two inch, uh, two inch by three and a half inch pieces of your barn like this and give that handy and now all at the same time making sure you're matching the same colors of your barns together you're going to uh, take one take the um, and you're putting right sides together you're going to line up the um, barn piece with line it up with the window because the window is what we are um what we are trying to encase all the way around in that log cabin style so you're going to line up all of your all of your blocks that you're chain piecing um doing the same thing putting the barn piece the three and a half inch piece over the top of the uh window the pieces that you just put together and do i have two on there no just one And then this one. And now if you happen to have, if you notice when I lay these on here, I have a little bit ex, uh, extra on the edge, uh, back edge of some of these. That's okay. And you're going to actually find that when you use that scant seam. Um, or if you had, if your pieces were a little bit wider and you left them wide, you're going to, you're going to see that also. That's why it's important when you're lining up, you line up with the corner of that window. Now, now we're going to keep doing that with the pieces following your instructions. We're uh, put on, putting on this piece, the three and a half inch piece. Then on all your blocks, you're going to put the top over the window of the three and a half inch piece. And then you're going to take the five inch piece and put it on the other side to complete, to complete the barn all the way around the window, making sure that you always press away from the window so that it's pressed onto the barn. And we will come back and work on the piecing for the roof. So one thing I noticed before um, moving on to sewing is I actually showed you to um, press the seams open the wrong way. So I wanted to show you that um, when you're pressing, you actually want to put the, when you have them closed like this, you actually want the yellow on the bottom, not the barn side, the yellow on the bottom 
place that iron and then press and of course this is like wait you already pressed me so um you want the yellow on the bottom bring the iron over so that it presses that seam towards the barn color and i did that wrong on all of these so i'm going to fix those just remember you want to press the seam towards the barn color not your window and make sure you fix that on all of them and then you put your piece on line that up with the window and then go um, and then put all of your pieces on that way now that we have all of our barn pieces sewn onto the window I did not trim anything because we're going to wait to trim until after we have sewn on the roof and then we're going to uh, square up our barns before adding the background fabric so the next step in our barnyard block is we are going to take our roof rectangles and we're going to sew the our background squares to it to give us our roof shape for our barns the one uh, one thing you'll need to do is you will need all of your uh, two by three fourth uh, two and three fourth inch squares from your background fabric all ten of them and you will need um, a pencil or pen and a straight edge like your ruler and you need to go on the back side if you have a back or a front on your fabric you need to go on the back side of your fabric on the background squares and you need to draw a line straight through um, uh, diagonally straight through your square to go through the top and bottom points so you have a nice straight line to follow when you sew then once you have all of those marked on this block you are going to actually sew on that uh, line that you marked not on the side like we did on our previous block this you're going to actually sew on the line that you just drew now we will take one of our one of our roof rectangles and we're going to take one of our background blocks and we are going to line it up with the edge with the short edge and the top and bottom of our roof and we're going to sew on that di um, diagonal line from the bottom corner to the center of the top directly on that line is where we're going to sew so again this is another really great place for chain piecing and you're going to place one together set it over on your machine and line up the rest of your roofs you should have um, if you're doing all five of them already all, all together then you'll do this with five of them if you've done one block as a uh, practice block first then you'll do this with four of them line that up set it over here making sure they're all the same three and remember if you have a square that has the um, serrated edge you are lining it up with the the tops of those little mountains on the serrated edge three and last one line those up then we'll go to the mesh the sewing machine and we will sew these on all right so now that we're at the machine what you're going to do is you are going to line up that line that you drew to be sewn straight through um, with your needle so you're going to line that up on your the the line on your where the needle goes put your um, your 
needle down and then you're going to stitch straight through following and if you get clumped up like that which can happen when you start on an edge just move your needle up reposition it and then start over and There we go. And you want to follow right on that line all the way through, stopping at the just past the top of that one. Then to chain piece, you're going to take the next one, then lining it up just like the first one. I like to make my needle come up, go down, and I actually will do that, especially when I'm starting on a corner like this couple of times and that usually helps me not bunch up like I did on the first one. And you're going to stitch all the way through the rest of them and we'll show you what you do after you chain sew all of these. Now that you've chain pieced all of the uh, one, one of the squares onto your roof triangle or roof rectangle, you're going to um, trim off uh, so they separate them. And then you want to get rid of this excess. So you're going to trim uh, a quarter of an inch, at least a quarter of an inch away from the edge of your uh, line that you just you just finished sewing so I just eyeball it removing that excess triangle on and you're going to do that on all of your blocks and then you want to bring the iron over and you want to press towards the background fabric on all of your blocks once you've done that with all of your blocks, you're going to bring over the rest of your background squares that you have um, drawn the, drew the line on. You're going to line that up with your other side of your rectangle. And what you want, you want it to overlap here because this is where it's going to give you your quarter inch seam. So um, make sure that you have a good overlap on the, at the center point between the uh, between your the background squares on your roof so you'll do that again we're going to show you i'll show you that on the next one you're going to take your block you're going to trim a quarter inch of away from where you sewed you're going to iron it open You give it a nice clean press then you'll take your block making sure that your line is heading towards the top center point you don't want to put it like this you don't want that you want it to go like this Line that up so it overlaps, and you're gonna sew all of those, all all of those blocks together, and then you're gonna trim, and then um, fold, uh, use your iron to press this open, and you'll have your roof tops. All right, now we have our um, barn squares with the window in the middle and the roofs. Now all we need to do is we need to sew those together and you're going to put them right sides together and remember we haven't trimmed these so your barns might be wider than your roofs. That's okay. Just center your roof on your barn um, and then you're going to sew a quarter of an inch, uh, a scant quarter of an inch seam across the um, across your barn so that your roofs and your barns are attached. One. 
All right, now that we've sewn all of the roofs onto our barns, we are going to press the seam open, um, open. So um, that is where you split it in half and you press it so that that seam comes open. Um, sometimes it's helpful to use something small to get in there in between to start opening it before you bring the uh, iron to it. But you'll press all of your seams open like that. And then once you've pressed all of those, you're going to bring it over to your cutting mat and you want to um, square up your blocks. You wanna make sure you have at least, um, and we'll actually come back, uh, give you a better angle on this in just a second. All right, now that we're at the cutting mat, we're going to square up our blocks. The big, the main thing you want to make sure you always have is at all of your points, especially of your roof, you want to make sure you have a quarter inch, at least a full quarter inch seam. Um, and so that's the first thing you want to measure up and make sure it's square. And so uh, um, we do that. We're gonna we're gonna trim the top and this one side. Um, we're we're trying to make sure everything is straight and has that quarter inch, at least a quarter inch seam um, on the top and the side. And if you accidentally come out with less than a quarter inch seam on your on your top here, that's okay. Don't um, you just want to make sure you have a nice straight edge? So don't try to to trim anything off of that. But then you're going to turn it around, and you're going to do the same thing. Now you have a, a nice straight line at the top and the side to line up to, um, as well as making sure that you have a quarter inch seam for your side of your roof here. And it should come out to five inches wide. Oops. And my ruler moved, so now I'm going to Make sure it's nice and straight before I trim the bottom. And if you can make it slightly bigger when you trim, that is always better because that gives you a little extra room when, when sewing. Um, so it should at least be, when you square this up, it should at least be um, seven inches. Mine's just slightly over seven inches tall. And it is, it's four and three fourths wide. Once you have all of your barns squared up, then you're going to take your background fabrics. You're going to take your three and... Three and a half inch wide piece and your two inch wide piece and you're going to put it one on each side of your barn you're going to sew those on and then you're going to uh, press toward you're gonna actually press those open um, the, these seams will be pressed open just like you pressed open the uh, the barn roof from the barn itself. Then once you press those open, then you're gonna take one of your long uh, background strips and that will be sewn onto the top um, above your roof. And then you're going to take your little green strip for your grass and that will be sewn onto the bottom. Um, making sure that you line up on one side just in case you had some extra um, so that when you're, when you're squaring it up, to nine and a half inches you have plenty of room and that is how you get your barn block 
If you have any other questions or um, anything at all, please message me and I'll be more than happy to help you. Have a great day and happy sewing.